Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Wright. This is my wife Chandra, and we are the pastors of Just Christ Ministries. We are so excited you have decided to join us for this worship experience. We're a church designed with the community in mind, working on the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go into service. So now, pour out my heart to you, yes, tearing, present, I am in you. So now, pour out my heart to you, my heart, Lord, is hearing presence.
champion. The Bible says he has made us more than conquerors. Amen. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Come on, can we shout out to God with a voice of triumph? Hallelujah. Come on, in the midst of despair, worry, 
confusion, loss. Come on, we have victory. We have victory. Can we lift our hands in God's presence just for a moment? Let's just reverence him as our champion, as our king, our Lord. And let's just worship him for a moment. God, we glorify you. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, God, you have given us the victory, and we thank you, God. I know sometimes it's hard to shout for victory when you're going through. But in the end, we always win. Come on, we always come out on top. We are the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. We are above and not beneath. All things are working together for our good because we love God and we've been called according to his purpose. So in the midst of what you're going through right now, come on, release your faith. Release your faith knowing that your God is bigger than whatever you're going through. He's bigger than sickness. He's bigger than death. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than violence. Hallelujah, God. We worship you in this place, God. We adore you, Lord. We release a praise, God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even though we know we win in the end, I hear the Lord saying, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. Come on, you can shout now. While you're still going through, by faith you can shout for victory. Hallelujah. You know, you know why I, I trust him so much? Because he's faithful. Anybody know he's faithful on today? That he is a very present help in your time of trouble. He said, I would never leave you, nor would I forsake you. He said, I'll always be there with you. So even now, God is with us. He is Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Can we just sit in his presence for a little while longer? Come on, release your worship. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, begin to release your worship. God, we love you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, those online, begin to release your worship in your homes. Wherever you are, begin to let God know how much you love him, how much you appreciate him. Hallelujah, God. You are the God of comfort. Hallelujah. You are the God of peace. You are the God that provides. And for that, we worship you. Can we give God one more hand and have a praise? And if you can, you can be seated in God's presence. Amen. It's such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time on this beautiful Sunday morning. I want to welcome those who are here in the building as well as those who are joining online. And always, it is my prayer that during our time together that something will be said or done to encourage you in your faith walk. And if you don't know Jesus, I pray that you will come to know him on today. We have a couple of announcements to make. I want to thank and praise God for all of you all who were able to make it out yesterday for our leadership training. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Amen. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. And I want to say this. If you want to live your best life, you have to invest in yourself. Whether it be books, whether it be exercise, your diet. If you want to live your best life, you have to invest in yourself. See, we're good at investing and giving people our time, but you have to, first of all, invest in yourself because if you don't invest in yourself first, you have nothing to give anybody else. So I encourage you all, whenever there's an opportunity for you to better yourself, for you to grow, for you to learn, take the time to invest in yourself. 
Amen. I want to also remind you all that this year we are participating in the race against violence. Last year, we could not because of the pandemic. I know my wife and I, we're going to be out there. Some of the kids, we're going to actually run in a race in Grant Park. And this year, we are raising funds to support our strategic social investment plan. Amen. I tell you all this with a heavy heart, with a sincere heart, that as the church, when we talk about our social responsibility, it goes beyond this worship experience. It has to. It, it, it has to be bigger than this. How many know God's bigger than the church? And God wants the power and love that we experience in here to flow out those doors, to flow into our homes and our communities. And so that means we have to now begin to find ways to engage people outside of a Sunday morning service. Now, we know it is our job to win people to Christ, but Christ met people where they were at. If they were in a gang, he met them in the streets. If they were on drugs, he met them where they were at. He met their need first to offer them something greater than what they needed. See, sometimes people don't even know they need salvation. They think they're okay. But we're believing God through these programs, through the youth programming, the mental health, the food security, the jobs, that we're going to be able to come in contact with people to give them what they need initially and ultimately offer them what they need called Christ. But we cannot do this without, without, without resources. You know, I've been asking you guys for weeks if you can give to share it because we support what we believe in. You, you a Bears fan, you support your team. You rep their gear, you cheer them on at the stadium or on your couch. Why? Because you believe in the Bears. If you believe in your community, and I know I know supposed to giving up, and we're saying, why throw our money into something that's not going to make a difference? I believe that through Christ, we can make a difference. I, I, be, I, be, I believe that, and, I, and I'll say this. If we can't save everybody, if we save somebody, that makes our work not in vain. And so I'm asking you guys, not for me. I tell you all, all the time, God has blessed me. And so when I'm asking and begging, it's never for me, for a car, for a jet, for a new suit. It's always for the community. And so my thing is let's invest in our community. If you can't give, I understand. I know inflation is high, gas prices are high. If you can't give, maybe there's somebody else who can. And every little bit counts. So go to our social media pages. There's a link. Give to help support this plan. We are believing God that this year the mental health facility will be open in Jesus' name. And there will be people in this church, in this community, getting the help that we have needed for so long. I mean, for so long. So I'm excited about that. So please make sure you give towards that. Also, May the 27th, we are hosting the Faith in Action, amen, right here on the basketball court. We are partnering with 3rd District uh, Police Department, 3rd District Clergy, and organizing the 3rd District. We're going to have a safe night out. We'll be praying, having music. It's a blessing when the police department know they need God. So, so it's not just about locking people up, but how do we build relationships? How do we include prayer? Because guess what? If we're going to address our social ears, ills, we have to build partnerships with the police department, with the aldermen, with our state reps, and we all have to come together and wrap our arms around our community. So on May the 27th, we'll be right out there in the yard, police to be out here, clergy will be out here, we're going to be praying, having a good time, there'll be free food, there'll be prayer, of course, music, voters registration, basketball, we're going to be out here representing uh, from 4.30 to 7.30, once again, May the 27th. Also, 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 there's a fundraiser today. Uh, C. Tracy Bustle, I think I have Kate, a Kate fundraiser. Amen. So C. Tracy Bustle after church. Also, uh, at 5 p.m., um, we'll be having our memorial service with my cousin, um, Jonathan. So I ask you guys to please uh, stick around. I don't want to cry, so I'm going to keep moving. Uh, you all know he was here last Sunday. We gave him a shout out for being in church. And, you know, by the end of the day, he wasn't here anymore. And so that's how quick life is. You know, when I saw him the last time, I gave him a hug, told him I love him. 
never thought that would be the last time. So I encourage you all, while your loved ones are still here, love on them. Don't let petty disagreements and arguments and all of that stuff interfere with your relationship because when they're gone, there's no I'm sorry. There's no reconciliation at that point. So even now, examine your relationships. Those people that mean a lot to you, spend time with them. I've been guilty. I've been guilty of spending so much time trying to build God's kingdom and pursue vision. I've really enjoyed my relationships. Amen. But I'm really learning now, God gave me a word. And he said, I have to start leading from the rear. I said, what does that mean? He said, let other people come front and you lead from the rear. And it's not because I don't want to do it. I just have to reprioritize my life. I mean, for the last 20 years, this has been my life. Every weekend, you know, every Sunday, this has been my life. And so I really want to enjoy my relationships. And I believe we have capable people here to minister. We have good friends to come in and minister. Uh, I, I guess the biggest fear of a pastor is it being about a personality. And if the personality is not there, the church is not going to grow. But we have always tried to make this bigger than the personality. This is about Christ. Come on, somebody, it's about Christ. It has to always be about Christ. No matter who's up here, who's talking, we're not listening for personality. We're not listening for uh, charisma. We're listening for God. He said, my sheep know my voice. Not the personality. He said, my sheep know my voice. And the stranger's voice, they won't respond to. So just, just keep um, my family in your prayers. Uh, my good friend Vondell was here to minister on today. He sent me a text that the young man that got killed in Millennium Park was a part of Champs that went to Gary Coleman. And so he's here also with a heavy heart. Life is real, y'all. Life is real. I heard uh, this guy talking about, he said in his, in his song, he said, you've never experienced grief until you experience it sober. See, sometimes we try to medicate to deal with grief. They don't really help. But when you deal with grief sober, you feel it. And you realize how much you need God to help you heal for real. So we're going to pray for my brother. Amen. He could have easily said, Pastor, I can't make it. But he's come here also with a heavy heart to give a word. But before he comes, let's prepare our hearts to give. We thank and praise God for the blessing of giving. Amen. Come on, how many chip forgivers do we have in the house? Amen. If you're giving in the building, please raise your hand for an envelope. The ushers will assist you. We thank and praise God for your past, present, and future support. Amen. Those who are giving online, you could uh, give with our cash app, which is dollar sign JCM Chicago. Once again, it is dollar sign JCM Chicago. You could also text to give at area code 773-455-0008. Text the word GIVE. Once again, that's area code 773-455-0008. Text the word GIVE. You can also give through our Tithely app. So God has blessed us to have multiple ways for you to give and be a blessing to this ministry. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. As you guys take out your devices and prepare your hearts to give. Come on, ushers. Give, and it will come back to you. Give, and it will come back to you.
unto the Lord. Let's thank and praise God again for the blessing of giving. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Also thank and praise God for our online members who are also giving. We thank and praise God for your support. For those that can, can you please stand to your feet for those who can? And we want to welcome, I won't even call him a visitor, our friend, amen, my brother. Uh, I've known him now for a number of years. Uh, he has worked in our community as an assistant principal. Uh, he has mentored hundreds of young men, black and brown young men in our community. His program is growing. Amen. It's going beyond just greater Grand Cross into other cities. And it's just amazing what God can do through an individual. And so we are very blessed today to have him as our special guest. Can we just point to him before he comes up? And we just pray, God, you will speak through him. I know, God, his heart is heavy right now. But God, I thank you for the word you placed inside of him for this house. I pray, God, you would comfort him as only you can. In Jesus' name, let's receive him by saying amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. It's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. I only can stand here by the strength and grace of God this morning. Um, it, it's not a good thing when you wake up uh, with a, a message saying that a young man that you tried to help was shot and killed. And the first thing that I had to do was conjure up enough energy and strength to call his mom. And when I called his mother this morning, and I can hear the pain and the hurt through her cry through the phone, my baby, my baby, my baby. She couldn't even talk. Sister had to take the phone to talk to me. And I said, my prayers and my thoughts are with you and the family. We support you. So I'll be there today after service and sit and be in the presence of God and a grieving family because God cares. We are vessels that God want to use for his glory. That's when things are going well, when things are not going well. God is still on the throne. I'm going to say that again. I said God is still on the throne. God is still in control. God shines brightest in darkness. God has a plan in the middle of the battlefield. One of my young men on the way to our session yesterday, I pick him up and I bring him to our champs mentoring session. And every week we get in the car and I ask him, you know, how he doing in school? How is mom? And what are your plans after the session? And so he said, I'm doing well. Grades are, are great. And I always ask, what does that mean? Oh, I'm making A's and B's. Okay, great. How's your behavior? Is, are you getting better? Because even if you're good, you can still go to great. Even if you're great, you still can be phenomenal. So he said, I'm doing good. I said, okay, you got room for improvement. You can go to great. You good, but you can go to great. And then he told me, he said, um, yeah, after the session, I'm going downtown. I said, don't go. The Holy Spirit came over me right in that moment, Pastor. I said, don't go. Somebody's going to get shot today. And I began to tell him about another young man that I warned that end up getting shot and killed some years ago. And I said, I care not just about the program, I care about your soul. 
don't go, somebody's going to get shot. And before I even knew who it was this morning, I sent this young man and his mom the screenshot of the young man that got killed, not even knowing that that was the young man from Gary Comer. And I said, this is why I'm saying don't go. You have no agenda. And I said, somebody's there going to be in the crowd. And then as soon as I pulled up, I got a call from Arnie Duncan. He said, Vondell, um, my condolences, I'm sorry. Uh, is there any way I can meet you and the mom today? He said, um, I got an outreach team working on this situation right now in the city. And he said, unfortunately, it was a gunshot by himself. So the news have reported that somebody shot him. And he said, you'll see the full video. I said, I couldn't watch the video. I had to turn it off. Because this same kid I told, I said, I know you're going through some things. I said, I'm here to talk if you need my help. I invited him out to the Bulls game in the evening. He didn't show up. I called his mom. Where is he? I'm waiting. We got to go. She said, oh, I forgot. I said, forgot? <laughs> I told you this yesterday. We were going to meet, and I was going to take him out. He came the next day. His head was down in the class. I told pick your head up. It'll be another time. Here's what I'm saying. The church, you just said it, Pastor, have to align to this vision. I'm going to read this vision because I did it before. I'm going to read it out just as a reminder of what the church is. This particular church, I'm going to come up here. Vision to expand. Notice what's in bold. <laughs> Expand the kingdom of God by building and maintaining healthy relationships with who? With God. With who else? Ourselves and with others. To develop youth and adult leaders to be people of influence. That is our mission. I love this mission. This is the best Mission of a church, I, and I've been to thousands of churches. I read this vision before a few years ago in front of this congregation. I'm reading this as a reminder because pastor's been talking about audit. <laughs> and we know that that's an examination. That's an account of what we do with this life while we on earth. There is a dispensation of judgment that is coming to the body of Christ first. Listen to me very carefully. We can say, oh, look at the world. Look at what they're doing. Nope. He coming to the church first. And guess who he's going to hold accountable? The body of Christ. What is he going to hold us accountable to? As you have aligned yourself to this mission of the church, God is holding you accountable to this. Because the pastor is the overseer of the soul, but it's up to you to develop your relationship with Christ. So let's go to the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. God put this in my spirit before I woke up this morning. He says, share with them 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm going to say that again. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Superlative, always. 
We learned that in class, grammar school. Superlative, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Then he says, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the consciousness that I have. God says, go out, be faithful, serve me with gladness. And then he says, if you follow me, you must deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. I'm about to go what they call old school. He says, it's more than saying that you love me. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. He said, if you love me, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross, and then you can follow me. Let me say it again. He said, I want you to sacrifice your desires, appetites, and wants so that I can come in and give you a different craving, a different appetite, a different spirit, a renewed soul, a restored mind that the world won't shake you, the world won't break you. Why? It's because your eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. So you're not moved by what you see. You're not moved by what you hear. You are steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. His work is glorious work. When we follow God, we save ourselves from the curse of the law. When we follow God, when it's time for us to give account for what he told us to do, we can say, God, not only did I take the gift and talents you gave me, but I multiplied them. I'm going to say that again. When we have been called by God to give an account for what we have done in this body, in this time, in this season, we can say, God... Not only did I take what you gave me, but I was able to multiply the talents, gifts, skills, abilities. There is nothing wrong when you fall into the hands of God. There is nothing wrong when you call upon his name. You want to know why? Because the Bible says in no wise will he cast you out. There is nothing wrong when you have to confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We talk about mental health. Jesus is the counselor, the great counselor. <laughs> if I'm going through pain, struggle in my mind, I'm going to the prince of peace. God told me, he said, tell him that I am the great redeemer. I'm coming to buy back. When we talk about the seven dispensations of the Bible, we talk about the first dispensation, which is innocence. God created the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. He put man in charge. He gave them everything that they needed. And he said, be fruitful. Multiply. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let me go back to the first Stance of this mission. To expand the kingdom of God. Sound like multiplication to me if we're expanding something, right? God is into growth. When he put a seed uh -oh, in the ground, he intend for it to grow. When he put a seed in a woman, the baby's supposed to grow. God is into life. He said, but the thief coming not but to, Shh. come on. But I have come that you might have life and it more abundantly grow. Church of the living God. The great redeemer is designed to buy back that was which was lost. 
we were lost. We were confused. We were depressed. We were on our way to hell. And God interrupted it and said, nope, I have a seed. Jesus, you ready to go? I got to send you, son. You my only hope. And he said, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave. He didn't give from a thousand sons. His only son. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. God demonstrated and modeled for us how we need to sacrifice. He said, I'm giving my only son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, grow, abundance, expand. Here's why. is because remember he gave the talents? He gave one, the one. The other one, how many did he give? He gave two, he gave him three, he gave him four, five, right? The three that he gave, he said, go out and be fruitful. What did the one with the one do? He took his talent and buried it. Why? Why? God gave each and every one of us something. And he want us to grow it. He want us to expand it. He want us to cultivate it. He want us to make the world better with it. Why? It's because he's coming back. And he says, I knew he was an evil man. He was going to come, come back and judge. So I wanted to bury it because I only got one. And the other ones were two and five. They went and they multiplied it. And when the judge came back, they got rewarded. The one who buried it got punishment. Uh-oh. What am I saying? We all have a responsibility to follow the plan and purpose of God for our lives. I've had the privilege, pastor, to sit in a room with kings, with presidents, I went to Oral Roberts University in the 90s, and I remember the great Oral Roberts was still alive. He spoke at my graduation before he died. I've seen all the so-called great televangelists. I remember, you know, being in the space in the room with Miles Monroe, having dinner with him and his wife. And here I am sitting right next to him with a room of four or five of us for hours. I'm like, God, you put me in a position. I remember having a conversation at the age of 12 with President Bill Clinton, telling him more money in minority schools, not knowing that I was going to be an educator one day. I remember being invited to the White House with President Obama and a few months ago sitting down with him and he looking at me, tell me the truth. And I had the opportunity to share with him what God was doing in my life. So all my life, I've been around greatness. I've been up to other parts of the world speaking and sharing about the power of what we're doing in Chicago. And then I would ask myself every now and then when I would lose a young man, God, why? God, why? I'm like, Pastor, I'm in this. I've given my life, I've quit my full-time school administration job to do this full-time. God, why? I love you with all of my heart. Why on my watch? And God says, I'm in charge. There's some things we will never understand about the omnipotence of, omniscience of God, omnipresence of God. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's everywhere at all times in every place. We can't go and hide from God. In the dispensations of innocence, we saw Adam hiding. He tried to cover himself with fig leaves. And God asked a simple question. 
where art thou? He asked him, where are you? The question did not infer that God didn't know where Adam was. The question made inference to see if Adam knew where he was. When God asks us a question, he already know the answer to it. He want to see if you know the answer to it. God knows all. He doing a heat check to see if you know where you are, if you in your right mind. So he lost innocence. Sin came in. Guilt came in. Consciousness. We were aware of our sin, so he wanted to hide himself because he was embarrassed and shameful because he knew he had did something wrong. And that's the thing, we want to hide. We want to protect ourselves when we know we're wrong. And God is saying, even in that I have a plan of rescue. He says, oh, I'm going to remove you from the Garden of Eden so that you can't eat from the other tree of life. Remember, he ate from the tree of good and evil. He became conscious of both good and evil. And he said, God, ah, they didn't messed up. Let me go ahead and get them out of here before they eat from the tree of life and then live forever with good and evil. Uh-oh, that would be dangerous. He says, so I am going to put animosity, I'm going to make it an enmity between you and the serpent. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold the serpent accountable too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hold him accountable for what he did to you. And then I'm going to restore you because you're my creation. Watch this. So he says that the only remedy to this problem called sin is what? Redemption. And it had to come through blood. So they try to use lamb and goats. They had to be without spot or blemish. And then he said, no, nah, that's temporary. Then I'm going to send the lamb of God. The second Adam and the last Adam. His name is Jesus Christ. This is the good news that I can preach here with. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, is that although we have failed, we have messed up, we have made mistakes, we told God, God, I ain't going to do it no more. Get me out of this. He got you out. You went back in. And he rescued you again. And you like, man, the grace of God. And then he said, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And we go back to God and God keep loving on us. He keeps showing up, his grace. He keeps making a way and providing for us. And he's saying, I do it because I love you. I do it because I love you unconditionally. There's nothing that you can do that can separate you from the love of God. And then he said, no principalities, no power, no nothing can separate us from the love of God. However, judgment is coming. Just eat, look. They caught the woman in adultery. They didn't bring the man. They caught the woman. They brought her, and they said, what, 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 do, you, what do you say, uh, Jesus, that we do with this woman? The Bible says the stone of the death, she was caught in adultery. I still am confused why they didn't bring the man who was caught in adultery. It's just talk about the woman caught in adultery. That man was doing wrong, too. But they tried to trip Jesus up. To see what he was going to say and what he was going to do in response to sin. Watch this. Jesus said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible talks, you know, when you study theology, they said that Jesus was kind of like on the ground. He wasn't really looking at the crowd. He was kind of writing something. The Bible doesn't say what the something is. A lot of people think it was the sins of the men who were accusing. And so when they looked down, they couldn't say anything. They all dropped their rocks and stones and walked off. 
But watch, the grace of God showed up in the middle of law. Why is because grace is more powerful than law. His grace showed up in the middle of law. The law says that she was supposed to be stoned to death. But Jesus, full of grace and mercy, stepped in and said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. So he rose above the law. And it was just him and her. And we read the scriptures and we know the story. Jesus asked the question, where are your accusers? The woman looked. Watch the grace of God. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. I'm freeing you from the pain, the destruction that you once was in, but I'm also holding you accountable so you won't go back into the situation that you're in because I am a mind regulator. I just demonstrated not only my unconditional love, but my power. And I extended it with a little grace. Because he, he could have gave justice. He could have even gave mercy, but he gave grace. Because mercy would be, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you go. But grace is, not only will I let you go, I'm going to forgive you of your sins and give you the liberty not to do it again. We stand in here because of the dispensation of grace that we're in. The seventh dispensation is that of judgment, is the new biblical Jerusalem. He's going to judge us. We're going to be held accountable for everything that we've done. And we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our leader, teacher, guide, counselor. And he's always going to bear the truth. Holy Spirit can't lie even if he wanted to. <laughs> Just imagine this. You walking outside. And you talking to your friends and like, man, look up there. The sky is blue. And he like, yeah, I know it's blue. The Holy Spirit said, look up. The sky red It's going to turn red as soon as he, the Holy Spirit said. The power of God is in the law of his word. That's why the centurion man in the scriptures, he said, hey, I have a servant at home sick. But he said, I've seen your power. All you have to do is say the word. You ain't even got to come to the house, Jesus. Just say the word and he'll be healed. And the Bible said in that self-same hour, his servant was healed because Jesus spoke the word. We have to speak the word. We have to live the word. We have to believe the word. Why? It's because Jesus is the word. Jesus is life. Jesus is the good news. And when he shows up, he's always teaching, preaching, and healing. That's the good news. That's the gospel, teaching, preaching, and healing. He's going to teach you. He's going to preach at you. And he's going to restore and heal you. <laughs> and they wanted him to do everything else but that. And then they accused him for claiming to be the son of God. Crucified him. And Jesus said, yep, this is part of the plan. Why? It's because my innocent blood is the only blood that can cover a multitude of sins. When he sees my blood, sees his righteousness, he sees the Holy Spirit filling up the emptiness. When he looks at me, he sees the blood he shed. I'm so glad. Yes. So listen, saints. I wanted to push us just a little bit to take inventory of our lives right now and ask ourselves, are we allowing God to use us or are we stagnant in our walk with the Lord? What is the thing that God is dealing with you about right now? 
that maybe you need to surrender to him, need to be under his power, under his jurisdiction, under his blood. Pastor, the Lord told me, he says, I had to show up today because you're hurting. You're grieving. He's dealing with his own loss, family. And yet he has to show up and be strong for everybody else. So I said, God, you're teaching us both the lesson that we need to lean on each other. And God said, I got you. It's okay. It's okay. I have the grace available for you to say, you know what? Let me lead from the back. You still a leader. <laughs> Jesus would lead from the back with the disciples. He would give them assignments and have them do things. And then if they didn't do it right, he would have a conversation with them. Peter, he had a, a cussing tongue. <laughs> right? He would, he would do it in love, but he would correct Peter. One time, uh, one of the disciples chopped off somebody's ear. And Jesus had to take it off the ground and heal the brother, put his ear back on. Read it in the Bible. Malchus, yeah. Because of human emotions. And Jesus said, but these are the people I want to be around and love. These are the people I choose to love. The crazy, the deranged, the off, the ones who cuss, fuss, fight, cut, all that. And Jesus is right there with them. And all the Sadducees and Pharisees, the church religious people, like, Jesus, why you keep being around all these people? And Jesus would say, hey, I thought the sick is the ones who needed the hospital, not the well. So, look, we around people who are sick. But we leave room for Jesus to come in and heal us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Past tense. Why? Because when Jesus died, he died for our infirmities, our sicknesses, our diseases, our mental health issues, all of that. And how many of y'all grateful for the Lord this morning? Come on, y'all. How many of y'all grateful for the Lord this morning? Stand to your feet if you're grateful. If you're grateful because I have an assignment, I got to pray and I'm done. I wanted to share and I wanted to get deeper. But when he told me, be unmovable, he said, always abound in the work of the Lord. And I just kept, pastor, I just kept seeing this vision. And God says, where are we with this? Where are we with this? We got strides for peace, the race against gun violence. We're going to partner with you all. Our organization is also a part, so we're going to be out there. We're taking the church outside of the four walls. There ever was a time where we needed in the earth is now. The kingdom of God is at hand. Those that have an ear, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I want to rebuke the spirit of depression right now. I want to rebuke the spirit of those who are in an entanglement right now. I want to release the spirit of love and hope and restoration in this house. Those who lack, who in between jobs right now. I pray for a divine intervention, a divine connection, a divine opportunity. That's not only good, but God. Father, I just pray, God, that the hedge of protection around this establishment. That, Father, that you will protect all of those in this house. Families, loved ones, cousins, nephews, brothers, sisters, aunts, grandmas. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that the spirit of the living God will rest in this house. I pray, Father, for a spirit of salvation, household salvation. 
I pray, Father, that deliverance will begin to manifest mightily in the areas of even finances. Sowing and reaping will be manifested greatly in this house. I pray, Father, that there will be uh, 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 doors that are opening that other opportunities will be on the other side of the door as we be obedient and walk through the door. I pray, Father, that business ideas and witty inventions will begin to happen even in our older age. Dreams and things that have been locked away from years will start to come back in our dreams as we sleep. And not only as we sleep, I pray for beloved to have rest. I pray, Father, for the spirit of anxiety that it will diminish and be dissolved by the Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that mother, hallelujah, that's worried about her lost sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, lost sons, lost daughters, adopted sons, adopted daughters, those who are wards of the state, wards of the court. I pray, Father, that you would give that mother, that father, who's foster the strength and wisdom on how to deal with somebody else's seed that they call their own. Father, I just thank you for the grace and the love of God. Even those who have been having relationship problems, God, and they want things to work. And no matter what they do, it seems to get worse. I pray, Father, that you will give them divine wisdom and energy to seek your word, Father. And once they open the word, the answer will be right there. That, Father, that they will not only see it and know it, but they will apply it and their lives will be changed forever, God. I pray, Father, that you will uh, give a pastor right, Father, to go ahead, Father, to expedite this mental health space. I pray, Father, that the finance is some donor who has a million dollars sitting in his bank account that he's been praying to ask God, to give him something to sow into, that you will put just Christ ministries on his heart, on his mind. I pray, Father, that right now you're working, you're working, you're working miracles, signs, and wonders. I pray, Father, that those that are dealing with health crisis, high blood pressure, and diabetes, Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are on prescription, that you would give them the grace to take better care of themselves, God to seek counsel, Father, to work out, to eat right. Give us wisdom, God, and give us the strength to follow through. God, I just thank you, God, for keeping our schools safe these next couple of weeks, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will not allow, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, another one to be lost. Father, for this one who was lost, I pray that you will raise 1,000 sons up to take his place. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. The one who's strong got on drugs, I pray, Father, that you will begin to deal with her right now. The Holy Spirit conviction come over her spirit right now. That you will be the only drug that we will need to get us high. Your high will keep us high and we'll never come back down because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Those, Father, who are believing you right now for answers, who are desperately seeking you, God, for a manifestation, God, I pray with them. I come in faith and I believe that it's already done. And, Father, we want to just start to give you praise. We want to start to worship you right now for you doing exactly what you said you were going to do. God, we give you glory that is already done. Father, we thank you that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I thank you, God, that promotions will come from the east, the west, the north, and the south. I thank you, Father, that good news will happen all week long for your glory. I thank you, God, that the enemy back is broken now. His power is rendered helpless. In the name of Jesus. We just thank you for strong faith, strong faith. I'm hearing in my spirit, pray strong faith, faith, 
faith that will remove mountains. Faith that when we speak, we'll have whatsoever we say. Faith that is unmovable. Father, we'll be sure to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. We say yes to your will, yes to your way. Those who need special prayer, just raise your hand. You need special prayer. I feel an anointing to just pray. I'm not going to ask what your situation is. God knows. God understands. And God has the answer for you. By faith, just lift your hands up, everybody. Just lift your hands up by faith. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises up in judgment shall be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord of hosts. We stand in the gap now for those who are in need of special prayer for a special circumstance that they haven't even shared with their close loved ones. You know deep down inside what they need, healing healing in their body, physical body, healing in their mind, healing in their finances. Whatever the situation is, God, we pray and we believe that you are manifesting yourself right now. That this time, next week, there will be a testimony for what you have done. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. Thank you for the deposit this morning. I pray, Father, that you will continue to prosper this church this ministry, in this season, in this time, in this hour. God, we love you. God, we honor you. And we give you all of the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for having me this morning. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Let's give our brother a hand. Amen. You know, what I'm blessed the most about is the fact that he preached the word of God. So it wasn't his opinion. It wasn't speculation. It was the word of God. And so when he talked about being strong in your faith, it is very necessary that we are rooted in the word of God, that we put our faith in him. Because as he mentioned, Jesus Christ is coming back. The enemy know his time is almost up. And he, the Bible said, the very elect will be fooled. There is so much misinformation out there. People being confused and deceived. I'm talking about people that know God. And God is saying, there are many of us that have powerful testimonies in God. Come on, has God manifested in your life in such a way you know God is real? I mean, you, you know God is real. Don't let nobody fool you. You've had a personal experience with God. He has proven himself to be real to you. Don't forget that. I don't, I don't care what the culture say, what people say. Hold on to your faith. There may be somebody watching right now or in the building who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is your time, now is your opportunity. You have heard the word of God, and the offer of salvation is at hand. If you're in the building or online and I'm talking to you, God loves you with an everlasting love. Every head bow, every eye closed in the building. If you're here and you don't know Christ, I want you to raise your hand and put it back down. Maybe you're online and you want to give your life to Christ. If you're in the building or online, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I admit that I'm a sinner, but I believe you sent your son to die for my sins. Come into my heart. Save me. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer in the building or online, 
Your sins have been forgiven. You are now born again. You are a son or daughter of the Most High God. The Bible said the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Now, once you get saved, you need to be a part of a church. Not just any church, but the church that God has already preordained for you to grow and to fulfill your purpose. If this is the church for you, we'll accept you now, online or in the building. If you're online and you're watching, God is sending you to join this church, you can join online by simply texting the number 773-455-0008. Text the word JOIN. Once again, that's area code 773-455-0008. Text the word JOIN. If you just want prayer, you can text that same number. Amen. Is there one in the building? Amen. Give God one more hand clap of praise. Let's stand to our feet for the benediction one more time. We're getting our spiritual aerobics in, sitting up, sitting down. Amen. Thank and praise God. Uh, so uh, we're going to keep the family in prayer uh, with our brother, Vondil. He's going to see them. We pray his strength and pray for the grieving mother. Once again, keep my family in prayer. We're going to have the memorial at next door at 5 p.m. If you can't make it, just sing your prayers. Amen. So we thank and praise God for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. As we leave this place, God, we will not leave your presence. Go with us, stand by us. Keep us covered with your blood until we meet again. All God's people said amen. 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 Give somebody a fist bump till you love them and Jesus loves them too.